All right, we are back. Working Dog Radio broadcasting the bite. Uh, I am Ted Summers uh, from Tulsa, Oklahoma. All right, everybody, we want to take a second to talk to you about an amazing sponsor. We have an amazing relationship with RayAllen.com. Ray Allen is a one-stop shop for everything dog, not just working dogs. Everything dog that you need, you can go down there, check them out, RayAllen.com. Awesome people. They got everything you need. Another one of our favorite partnerships is with a dog trip. They've been with us from the start. Uh, great collars, great ball poppers, great GPS tracking, big dog, small dog, bark collars, everything. I got everything like that they have at the kennel. We use it every day. Be sure to head them up, dogtrip.com. Listen for the discount code later in the episode. Hey, guys, it's going to happen. August 16th through the 19th, HITS is coming back. The HITS Canine Conference in Orlando, Florida, August 16th through the 19th. Get on there. It's the biggest, the best. Check it out. Hitscanine.net. Hitscanine.net. Get registered now. Take the guesswork out of making sure you're feeding your working dog correctly by using Kinetic Dog Food. Hit them up at kineticdogfood.com and look them up on the Instagrams at Kinetic Dog Food. Take all the guesswork out and do it right from the beginning. We love Horizon Structures. Dude, this stuff is so awesome, man. You can get online. You can talk to them. You could build it you want from mild to wild. They'll come bring it to your place, set it down on your pad, hook up your power, hook up your water, and you can put dogs in it that day. If you don't believe me, check out some guys like uh, Justin Rigney. He's got a great setup there. Ask him. Check him out, horizonstructures.com. It was definitely good. So anyway, Hits is going to be in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, and I'm pretty sure uh, next, next year, same time, pretty sure they they have a wave pool they have a lazy river but i think they have a you can surf in the desert and i'm all about it (laughs) find new ways to hurt myself magnificent uh with me as always from canton ohio is eric stambro eric what's going on uh yeah just got back from hits um my our both of us had problems leaving uh, Orlando because of weather. I think <laughs> yeah. you got stuck for like four hours on the plane and stuck yeah. in Dallas. And my flight got canceled and I had to go back to the hotel and hang out and got about an hour of sleep and then rolled back over to the airport. But we got home and right back at it, man. Doing dogs. Uh, brand new batch of pet dogs started on Monday. So I jumped in to help that. And then I have a couple dogs in the kennel that I'm working up. Uh, like I said, I took... August off for the most part, but I still have two dogs. Um, one I'm cleaning up um, his bite work and everything, getting it all ready to go. And the other one, uh, I think I'm going to do single purpose on him. Um, he's not a dual purpose dog, but he's a lot of, he's fun. The last of the Springers left uh, yesterday. Oh, I saw that. Where'd you send it? Yeah. Uh, out to California. Um, so out, out there, there's a, a training group that took the first dog. He went to one county training groups taking this dog and sending it to a different county. So they'll like him. The real good dog, uh, wide open, pretty raw. They're like, does he know any obedience? I'm like, no. Obedience <laughs> to odor, bitch. Yeah, he just, <laughs> he, the day before I shipped him, or maybe it was the day, I don't know, he killed a mouse out in the, in the field behind the kennel. I had to pry it out of his mouth. Um, Dude. That's two animals he's killed. One was a bird, like a lame bird he killed. I had to break or stick him. He's a fucking Springer Spaniel. Bro. The uh, those the break those, stick him. Those pointers that I have, the one that just graduated and like he certified on Friday, and then Saturday morning found like thirteen pounds of meth. Um, he's the they're the same way. Um, we raise them like we raise Malinois or like dual purpose dogs, right? Chasing, playing, tugging shits, tearing stuff up, mm-hmm. and they'll kill birds. Like they will not point. Like they'll kind of point, but then if it moves, it's they're fucked. Like God. they're gonna kill it. They've killed. They went after cats. They've gone out. They've killed a couple of birds. And uh, one of the dudes from Oklahoma City was in. And uh, our, the head guy from Anthony Moore, we had him on the podcast, came over to see uh, his new dog. But also we had him out working. He's like, I have never seen a pointer play fucking tug like that. I'm like, shit, these motherfuckers mm-hmm. are on a sleeve. So, <laughs> and then pee on it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, yeah. So here's something crazy. Uh, while we were in hits, my wife was tending to the kennel. So I had a mal a Dutchie and a um, the Springer in there. So what she does is she puts the night before, at the end of the night when we put them to bed, she likes to put the food out for the morning in the bowls, leave them out there up on this uh, elevated desk. She came back in the next day and the, the bowls were empty. Empty. Like, <laughs> so it would be one, two, four cups of food gone. And... Um, 
She's like, I think we have mice. I'm like, what fucking mouse took four yeah. cups of food? So we talked to our ladies, our, cause we live out kind of in the country. So we have an exterminator and Michelle's like, Oh no, that's the rat. They come and take the food. They hoard it. They grab it. They don't leave droppings. They take it wherever and they hoard it. I'm like, man, that must've been a whole day project all night. So, um, she came out, found the entry point into the base of the, of the kennel building, put a sealed it up, put a trap out there. Sure enough, big ass rat tail hanging out of there today. So we called the, um, so where my kennel is, my kennel is basically a huge, like three car garage turned into a workshop before I had it. Like there's 440 electric in that bitch, which I'm scared to death of. So I turned that shit off, but it's got 440, 220, one, it's got everything. Um, but a, next to it is a house and these young couple live in the house and I can tell they're disgusting, absolutely disgusting. And um, it turns out they're massive hoarders. And so we contacted the, uh, the owner of the place. We go, look, we got a rat. My place is impeccable. It doesn't smell like a kennel. It smells like the YMCA that I use so much chlorine. And it, <laughs> it's so clean and everything. I said, it didn't come from here. So he showed up today and went into the house and called my wife. And he's like, uh, I gave him 30 days to get out. He said, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. So what they're, they're taking garbage and laundry in their bags and throwing in the down the stairs in the basement, leaving it. There's piles oh. and piles and piles of dirty. They must just be buying new clothes, piles of laundry and piles of garbage. And then there's pathways through the house. And it's a young couple. How, I know you get a hoarder. How to get two fucking hoarders? I don't. It's so weird to wow. me. Wow. And um, they they quit mowing the lawn. They have these two giant elka hound and some other dog that that they got a tiny little yard they poop in. I know they don't clean it up. So they're it's it's disgusting. Um, so thankfully he's getting rid of them. Um, like their porch is covered in stuff, boxes full of stuff. I don't even know what it is. But yeah. So if you got a clean kennel and there's a rat in your kennel, look at your neighbors. Motherfucker. <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> um, anyways, that's what. Oh, and uh, you can see if you're on YouTube, you can see my beat. This is not how a Beats headphone is supposed to move. Nope. It got broke in the transit back from hits. So, fuckers. Now I got to get a new pair of headphones. <sighs> I had these things for a while, man. They did all right. Yeah, you can, we can replace this to top piece. And you, if you're listening to this, you're like, Eric, why is your voice so shitty? Listen, Ted and I, all we do so is at the booth, talk nonstop. Then we teach a class, two hours of talking, and then all night long drinking and people coming up and talking, and we're just talking, talking, talking. It's like four days of me getting sick of hearing myself talk. So now my voice is all fucked up. Yeah. Every year. And yeah, every year. Same thing. Same with me, and then I'm out yelling at fucking dogs today. So, <laughs> well, because my I was talking with with our guests beforehand. Like I have those new um, <clears throat> noise canceling like uh, Sig Axon um, things to shoot with, but nobody else has noise canceling ones. <laughs> yeah, right. Yell, yelling at my handlers and shit. Yelling at dogs. Yelling at my. They're like I'm trainers. standing right here. Yeah, like why are you yelling? I'm like I'm not. You can't fucking hear me. Like I'm talking normal voice. So, uh, so who do we got tonight? What do we got going on? So, um, the next guest we have on there, uh, we both talked to him. We never met. We, you know, we're friends on Facebook or online. And um, but you know, there's so many people. Like this is. We probably have 1.1, 1.2 million that downloads on the podcast, which is great numbers, which would make it seem like it's a massive community, but it isn't really. It's actually pretty small, um, especially on the training side. And um, iron sharpens iron. You know, guys know good trainers. Good trainers know other good trainers. We also know bad ones, but um, and no, no eventually, no. right? Eventually, <laughs> the good ones always end up talking, meeting working together, doing some things together. So our next guest, he's um, got a great reputation. Uh, people that, that deal with him, love him, say his stuff's great, his training's great, his dogs are great. Um, he does a lot of stuff with Canines United, which um, is a, a good group of guys doing real good things. So uh, with us tonight is our friend, Mike Lilly. Mike, how are you doing, buddy? Good, sir. How's it going? Glad you guys had me on. Appreciate it. Yeah, I reached out um, to you the other day. I'm like, hey, man, you want to fucking come on? You're like, uh, yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> if you guys are listening, you're like, why is there a weird gap and break in the conversation and everything? Mike just hit the wrong button and hung up the fucking phone. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> so we've had it, wanted to have him on, and I've interacted with him on Facebook quite a bit. And like Eric said, you know, I mean, everybody... <laughs> We've actually had people ask, say, why don't you have Mike on? I'm like, yeah, and, you know, we've got a, we want a couple of, other, there's several other guests too. And I'm like, fuck. And, you know, we have more than one person, more than just Eric and I that work at the podcast or work for the podcast. So we have like people that are running our guests and all that kind of shit. So <laughs> they, you know, always, I was talking to Eric and he was like, I'm talking to Mike. I'm like, ask him if he wants to come on. He was on the short list anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. A lot of times we'll get people, we reach out to them or they'll reach out to us, but I'm like, Mike ain't going to reach out. He's too humble. So let's go ahead and just throw him on. Uh, no, man, I appreciate you guys having me on. You guys are, are big in the world and somebody knows my name. I'm happy about it. So cool. Well, let, let's uh, do what we normally do, man. Give us your background. Tell us like uh, where you grew up and how you got into dogs and where what led us to today. Yeah, man. So um, got into dogs, super young age. Um, my dad had hog dogs our whole life. So I told my parents that I, I think they only had me and my brother to take care of dogs. So, um, and uh, there was always at least 15 to 30 dogs at the house and we were hunting every night. And that's pretty much all I did growing up was hog hunting and, and uh, working cows and building fence. And my dad was a mechanic, is a mechanic. And so working on, you know, agriculture equipment all the time and <clears throat> living in the woods and so dogs have always been, you know, my, my life there's, I've always had at least a handful. Um, and then realized I wanted to, you know, get into law enforcement and, and, uh, being a game warden where I'm from in South Florida was always, we always interacted with them. Cause if you're hunting, you're always running into game wardens, whether it's good or bad. Um, and, uh, tried out a couple of times that was back when, you know, they could, have hiring freezes and could pick who they wanted and you know not like today where uh you know not as many want to do the job so mm -hmm. I tried out um didn't make it the first time tried out the second time got got picked up and and uh went to work full-time for uh, Florida Fish and Wildlife um got to do a ton of cool stuff man uh, loved the agency thought I would retire from there uh, got into canine as soon as I was able to, as soon as uh, policy said I had time in and uh, got selected for a, a dog position. And um, I think my story in this step is like a lot of guys, like you, you get stuck with trainers that know a certain way and that's the end of it. There's, there's nothing else out there in the dog world training wise. There's this one way it works for every dog. Uh, and that's the end of it. And it was very frustrating for me. And I got tired of not catching somebody who I should have and um, started looking to other trainers for uh, things to make myself better. And all that did was get me in trouble with my training staff. So um, got an offer from uh, the sheriff's office and uh, in South Florida and, and uh, was able to pretty well go right into canine, got to select my own dog and and uh, went from there, man. It really, uh, my first dog was a uh, fish and wildlife detection and, and uh, tracking. So um, we did a lot of article recovery and a, a lot of detection for, you know, saltwater species, freshwater species, uh, deer, turkey, bear, things like that. But our main bag was tracking. And that's, I love, 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 love tracking. And, uh, but tracking with a <clears throat> non bite dog gets frustrating because then you hmm. just, you just end up in a really shitty foot chase with a dog. And uh, so decided, you know, dual purpose was definitely the way I wanted to go. And when that opportunity came up, I, I snatched it and never, man, thought I would be leaving Fish and Wildlife. Love the job, love the agency, but just canine had its own issues. And um, when I went to the sheriff's office, I went through canine school and was able to go through trainer school pretty quickly after following uh, my handler school. And um, was kind of voluntold to be supervisor of the unit, which I never wanted to supervise another human being a day in my life. Uh, I'll be responsible, um, for my actions and, uh, but never wanted to be a boss and, um, got to, you know, kind of get into that role and, and, uh, select a few guys, 
uh, from the agency into K9. And man, when I retired, we had a really solid group of guys, like a really, really good group of dudes. And, and uh, we were catching bad guys as often as, as we were able to and deploying as often as we could. And, and uh, so I, man, I love, love the, the hunt and uh, got an opportunity to, to get out of law enforcement. I was doing pet dogs, you know, on the side already and uh, made the jump, retired, uh, moved to Tennessee and, and, uh, you know, had some ups and downs through there, but ultimately ended up, me and my wife started MLK9. And so now we do, I have three trainers full time and cleaning staff, and we do a lot of pets. Um, uh, I still do police dogs. I keep asking myself why I keep doing police dog schools because uh, it's long, long, long days and, and uh, you know, a lot of beating your head up against the wall. But when it's your passion, man, and you love seeing dogs go out and work the street and, and love seeing those light bulbs come on with handlers, it's, there's nothing like it. And it's hard to not do it. And uh, I've got a handler school going right now, handler and trainer school going now and going really well. Uh, um, it's good, man. It, I never would have figured I would have uh, been in this spot, you know, a few years ago. Never, never would have thought we'd, we'd be here and, and be as fortunate as we are. So um, that's my, my story in a nutshell, man. It's, I miss police work and, and miss the dogs hunting, but I still get to live vicariously through my handlers. So, yeah, handler school and then cool pictures after are always, <laughs> exactly. always pretty sweet. Yeah. So, yeah. Ted like, makes fun of me. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. We were yes. at Hits. Yes. So hold on. Say that. Let me, we were <laughs> yes, at Hits do that. the other day. We're at the bar and Ted's talking to people and I'm talking to people and I hear him going every other fucking month. Eric's texting me going, I think I'm done. I think I'm done with police dogs. I think I'm done with police dogs. <laughs> it's not yeah. a lie. It is true. Yeah. Yeah. I do say it. Yeah. Um, Handler schools are tough, man. Um, guys don't think about it. Handler schools are a long commitment. They're a bit of a time suck at times. Um, they're And they're not even as long as they used to be. You know what I mean? Yeah, really? They used to be ridiculous, um, you know. But Ted and I talk about that all the time. We get frustrated and the agency takes forever to pay and there's all this bullshit and that bullshit. And um, if I just quit doing the police dogs, I would not have a kennel. Because when we're done with this, I got to go to the kennel. I got to go take care of dogs. Hopefully they haven't pissed and shit. I think maybe we we'll be, might be all right tonight. Um, I got to go deal with that. Um, I, but then fucking Saturday or this weekend, I'm driving to Connecticut to teach and look at fucking green dogs when I'm over there. Because yeah. I have like 15 invoice uh -huh. or, or quotes out, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they keep coming to me. I, I've got Just like when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. in. Exactly. <laughs> The end of every school i say that's the end of it and i get a call hey can you do build us a dog and do a school and give us a quote sure <laughs> yeah uh, and what's what eric's oh that's eric's rule all the time right like don't ever say no like somebody asks you to come out and track like yep. i'm not gonna say no right not so on the same phone thing. yeah and right. so it's like same thing like people are like hey can you do this you're like uh Sure. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I can do and that. And I have a lot of dogs in Tennessee. A lot. Yes. I don't know, ten yep. Tennessee has been a, yep. um, a good relationship for me. One of the big agencies down there, Knox County, have ten of my dogs now. Yep. Um, I've got them spattered all over the place. So feel free, Mike, to <laughs> to, 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 to <laughs> take those. Because <laughs> the homeboys from uh, when my boys from Knox County call me, I can't tell them. I may stay in business just for them, dudes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, but anyways, let's go back. So most people, South Florida, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, all concrete, water, everything, all this other shit, they would be fascinated to learn the wildlife of, of um, South Florida, especially the um, hogs. You want to yeah. get into that? Like the, ho the whole hog thing when you're growing up and, and what people actually don't know about South Florida. Yeah. So <clears throat> hogs are, are like you're, you're talking about your, the rats from the neighbors. <laughs> they're a nuisance, man. They are everywhere. And they're, they're not as bad now as they were whenever I was a kid because um, the Panthers, the Florida Panther has kind of taken over. Uh, what? So, yeah. So Florida Panther will run through hogs like 
uh, my dad, he lives in, he lives, my mom and dad live in Tennessee now. Uh, they moved recently, but my dad ran a large orange grove in Florida and oranges are like crack to a, a wild hog <clears throat> and makes for good eating as well. Um, but in these orange groves, whenever I was much younger hunting, hog hunting seven nights a week, man, I just ate, slept and drank it. Um, you could roll in there and catch you could catch hogs till you're tired of catching hogs. I mean, you could fill a 30 hog trailer up just in the blink of an eye. And now you roll in those neighborhood in that grove and, and uh, you may catch one, but he's going to be a motherfucker. <laughs> he is going mm -hmm. to be survival. That's right. He's going to be something that a Panther looked at and said, fuck off. I'm not even trying that. And so if you do end up catching that one motherfucker, um, your next trip is to the vet. Uh, cause you're getting dogs worked on and, and, uh, it's just a, a rough night. So it's, uh, man, I had, that was all I did it for. We, we don't kill them. Uh, we, we cut them and, you know, we, we castrate them, mark them and let them go. And, and, uh, we do it for the dog work, you know, that's what I always grew up doing. So, mm -hmm. um, watching just like a police dog, watching these dogs, uh, you know, we didn't have, we didn't run them on leashes. It was the old dog trained the young dog. And, uh, um, mm -hmm. it was the, the dogs learning as they went and, uh, raising puppies and, and, uh, just, it was the training aspect and I didn't know it then I had no idea. Um, uh, God, if, hmm. if I knew then what I know now, I, I'm, you know, I'm going to apologize to every one of them when I see them one day that I lost from then because I did so many of them wrong. And, uh, but we knew what we knew. I knew what I was raised with and, and, uh, you know, the old farts from that area um, taught me and my brother a lot. And, um, so, yeah, the, the hogs are they're not as much as they were when I was a kid, but golly, they're everywhere. So when you're working ranches and and uh, building fence, working cows, uh, discon sugarcane fields, um, you interact with hogs on a regular basis. And they're, they're too much fun not to not to try to put a dog on and catch <laughs> that's kind of the same up here with uh coyotes they run a lot of coyotes up here but they yep. don't fight the coyotes right. run 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 until they kill them um yeah. let's back up a fucking plant panther it, it, describe these panthers yeah man a big cat yeah i know but like how big how are they black what do they look like <laughs> um, yeah. um they uh i've seen some working at night as a game warden man um strolling through the woods with night vision you know working working whatever, uh, grow houses, hunters, whatever it is. And, um, I've come across some that were the size of my half of my transit connect van. And I was like, Holy shit. <laughs> so, nope. uh, the, the biologist and the state say they only get to this size, uh, bullshit. Uh, they mm -hmm. very low and they're extremely athletic. Um, and they, you know, it's coming, there's going to be a day where they scoop up a, a hunter that's from Miami that has no idea what he's doing in the woods. And he's in where the area I work right on the edge of the Everglades. And, uh, he's not going to come back to his truck <laughs> and they're yeah. gonna him he's wearing there. Lululemon boots and shit. And it's like you exactly. in the wrong place, son. You're going to find him stashed up under a pile of, of pal palmetto fronds and, and some mud because he's going to be what he finished off later by a Panther. I've, I've tracked guys trespassing before I even had a dog. I've, you know, learned a long time ago how to track uh foot sign and and uh i've tracked guys for a ways uh trespassing or poaching or whatever they were doing and then start to see a panther footprint right inside of their boot track i, I turn around and go the other way man you got nope. they got bigger problems than a game board. <laughs> where the hell were we eric where they were like they had fear of an alligator eating a dude they were oh chasing. that was in that was in marion county they wouldn't show us yeah, they chased man. the dude into the pond and two alligators came and ripped him in half. Bro, I've had them. I've literally tracked a guy, tracked him with a bloodhound, and then got to the bank. The dog kept giving us a negative, and we capped and capped and capped. And I was like, it was one of my handlers. I said, bro, go back to that original spot. And the dog did the same thing off in this little crappy pond in the middle of the hood. I mean, full of garbage and dead dogs. And I shine over the edge and, and there's old boy's face. He's just got his nose, mouth and eyeballs where he can breathe out of the water. And I said, bro, you better bring your ass out of there. Cause there's three alligator eyeballs right behind you. So it's either you get bit on this end or eight on that end. You decide, man. <laughs> it's fucking dinosaurs, dinosaurs yeah. in South Florida. Nah, 
I'm out on that. <laughs> That's insane. Um, <laughs> full body. That have had chunks missing out of them from Gators. And we interact with them a lot. Yeah. I Ted's heard me say this. I, I'll tell this to pet owners, like in a big group class, just to get a, a laugh. I'm like, I'm always surprised that these that we have these domesticated predators that live with us, these dogs, right? And live with us. I go, imagine if cats were the size of dogs. Yeah. We would all be dead. And it yeah. would just be a bunch of cats running yep. around, big fat cats running the world. They just haven't got that big. But apparently they're running around Florida. Yeah. That big. They're panthers. Yeah. Stealing calves, eating cows, hogs, deer. Uh, it's a problem. No, so now back up to the hogs. Are those edible yeah. or that's a, they're garbage pandas? No, no, they're good. Um, sugar, uh, ones that, you know, grow up eating sugar cane. Uh, we have a lot of sugar cane and uh, orange groves. So tangerines, grapefruits, all different kinds. They, they eat all that stuff, man. And it uh, makes a difference in their meat. Now you don't want to, you don't want to, you know, try to eat uh, a boar hog that, is still got his nuts and and they're just gross, man. Tough. Bro. <laughs> they, taste uh, like a, they taste like a copper penny. They're not real yeah. good eating. What do they have in the, Oklahoma? What, what's in Tulsa? They got hogs? we got hogs here. Yeah, well, not yeah. like in Tulsa, but we have hogs here. Yeah, for sure. That tear shit up. We have a bunch of sod farms just south south of here. Oh, yeah. they're, they're they're always fucking up sod farms, and yeah, it's a yeah they're. Yeah, they got Texas. hogs in Tulsa. They work at the Diamond Royale. That's the only exactly. difference. They're strippers. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. Hey, look, my girl has vitiligo. Put her on stage. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyways, um, so we're going to go ahead and take our first break. We come back. We're going to get into the topic at hand, which is going to be tracking. Um, it's tracking the out, and I don't know what else is always a – um, topic that people are fascinated with because a lot of people don't know how to start it. But again, we're gonna we're gonna get into different styles and things like that. So uh, give us a minute. We'll be right back. Go ahead and listen to the commercials. If you don't, check out the show notes. Got all the discounts codes in them. Stand by. Hits Canine Training Conference. This is America's premier canine training seminar, packed to the brim with the world's best instructors and me and Eric, all covering important topics. There's no better place to learn and no better place to network with other handlers, breeders, and trainers. Hits 2022 is being held in Orlando, Florida this year, August 16th through the 19th. And I know how you guys are. Everybody waits the last minute. And in the post-Rona world, everybody's training budgets are being cut and everybody's deciding whether they're going to be able to get to go or not. So don't wait because they're not going to have an infinite number of spots and the price goes up after a certain date. So get signed up as soon as possible. It's in Orlando. We'll see you there. Be sure to hit them up. Hits K9, letter K number nine dot net. One of the best relationships we have in this podcast and in this industry is with the great people down at Kinetic Dog Food. The story of Kinetic uh, Performance Dog Food is pretty simple. They wanted to make a better premium dog food for the dogs that need it the most. Their goal is to give every working and sporting dog a higher energy level, better performance, and better overall health through superior nutrition. So they formulated a line of food based on what they consider to be the optimal profile of a performing of performance dog. They've done tons of research on this. This isn't their first rodeo. These guys know what they're doing. If you're a kennel, they will come to your kennel. They will see the problems that you have. They will check out what works for the dogs that you have. Um, they're amazing people to work with. They drop ship a pallet right to you if you want. Um, I know a lot of guys that use them. There's a bunch of different formulas on there. And uh, 32K might not be for your dogs. Maybe the 26K uh, works. They can adjust it. They'll give you the right ideas what to do in different parts of the year. Winter's different than summer. It's uh, it's really a well-run, good dog food um company kineticdogfood.com be sure to check them out on social media too man they're they're amazing folks kineticdogfood.com by now you've probably all heard my story at least once i'm usually getting tagged by dogs or hurting myself so this next product is like near and dear to me because i actually use it uh quick turn by vet care it does great for keeping small things from turning into big ones. I use it at the kennel for uh, clients' dogs that have some issues with skin stuff or have food allergies or have environmental allergies. Works great. Keeps hot spots from making giant hot spots. And it keeps my working dogs who inevitably find like, magnificent ways to hurt themselves from turning it into a giant vet visit. Stops little issues from becoming big ones. So it comes in a spray, comes in an ointment, comes in a dressing. 
It's great for creating a protective barrier and promoting wound healing. You really only have to use it like once a day. So there's no reason not to have it in the vehicle. Since it's temperature stable, you don't got to worry about it getting hot, getting cold or anything like that. So put it in your first aid kit or put it in your cabinet. Vetcare.us on the internet. Quick term by Vetcare on the inter- on Instagram and on Facebook. And then hit them up with the discount code 10WDR for 10% off your first order. So my entire time that I was a handler or a trainer in law enforcement, the cars at my department in the departments that I trained all had American aluminum accessory kennels in the cars, different cars, man, Dodge chargers, all Ford models, some Chevys, uh, SUVs, cars, everything. We loved American aluminum accessories. Um, it's a great product, a great company. They've been serving uh canine law enforcement community for over 20 years. If you check out their uh, website, E Z that's a letter Z EZ rider online.com. They got testimonials. They got videos on how to. They got a list of everything they have. Uh, just today, we made a post on the Working Dog Radio social media showing a dog that survived a really bad crash because of the American aluminum kennel in the back of the car. Check them out online, guys. EasyRiderOnline.com. Just let them do their thing, man. Whatever car you got for your work, your patrol car, get a hold of them, American aluminum accessories, and get the best in the business. Next up comes uh, training courses online from our friends down at Highland Canine Training, Jason and Aaron Ferguson. So in the post-Rona world, uh, training budgets have been getting cut. People aren't going to be able to travel, whether it be instructors or they be canine handlers and supervisors going somewhere else for training. So Highland has announced a lot of online training courses. One of those that sticks out to me is their police supervisor canine course. And it's no secret that one of the problems with canine tends to be some of the supervision issues. This course is specifically designed for administrators and covers utilization as well as liability and FLSA issues. The course can be taken at your convenience and you'll receive a certificate of completion at the end. When you go to tactical police canine training, that's letter K number nine training.com and use the discount code WDR30, you'll get 30% off of that course. All right, everybody, we are back. Working Dog Radio, broadcasting the bite with Mike Lilly from MLK9. Camped out in uh, Tennessee. Um, East or central? Where are you at? East. Yeah. East, that's what I thought. Yeah. Knoxville? Yep. And I live actually in Maryville, so. Oh, okay, uh, cool. You even even threw the vole in there, Maryville. Right. That's right. You got to get it right. Yeah, they'll beat your ass down there. Don't don't let them say in (laughs) Knoxville. Um, so we we're we're talking about all the crazy shit in South Florida. It's not all about uh, pit bull and nightclubs. Um, right. There's a lot of wilderness and wild shit, bears and all kinds of. I met a guy years ago. I went through when I was still at the police department. I was in a um, in the drug unit, and I went through a an OSADEF class, basically how learning how to start an uh, organized crime um, investigation. We were doing street gangs, but organized crime street gang definite. Um, uh, investigation using the U S attorney's office. And this guy was from Florida and him and his family ran bears. Oh, and yeah. he was from like South Florida. I'm like fucking bears. Yeah. It always reminds me of anchor man. They can smell a woman's menstruation. They're going to come kill us all. Yeah, and they use Walker hounds on Panthers too, man. There's a, an old timer. He, I mean, he's, he was like a gazillion years old when I worked for fish and wildlife and, that's how they they tag and and uh, put the trackers on them. They run them with Walker Hounds and and uh, this dude was old school man, old school. It's just a, a rough life and tough dogs. So yeah, a pack of Walker Hounds will fuck you up, right? Yeah, <laughs> sure. yeah, yes, they will. <laughs> so one of the things you were talking, you said earlier, is you got frustrated early on in the canine thing because there is uh, back then. This is it. This is the only way, period. Yep. Plain and simple, period. That is z- actually not true at all, of course. But one yeah. of the one of the um, things that we train that's definitely not true is tracking. Yep. Um, I The way I train tracking is different than Ted. And Ted's style he's tracking now is different than he was doing a year ago based on stuff we learned on the podcast and some things he's trying out. I've changed. I've, you know, came up with some different things. My tracking style is, uh, of teaching is pretty, pretty much the same or close to the same. I mean, I've gotten better at it and teach some things up, up in Canton. We had a lot of success. Like we'd have 
you know, a dog may have 150 apprehensions in his career, 100 of those from tracking. And it's a city, so there's grass, concrete, uh, grass, concrete, grass, blacktop, you know, yep. differences. So it's a special way of doing things. But um, you may have a, even an, another way of tracking. Talk about, like, when you first got into it, the style of tracking you were taught, what you thought was great and what wasn't so great, and how it formed the way you do things now. Yeah, so, right, you know, the way my first dog was trained was, uh, you know, fire tracks, runoffs, whatever you want to call them, uh, where the dog did a billion reps relying on his eyes um, and not being taught to use his nose for this work at all. And uh, we tracked in uh, sod fields. Uh, and at that time, like short grass tracks were the most difficult thing oh man, grass track tough. And um, then we would go to woods. And um, when we started getting to where, okay, now the dog can't use his eyes anymore, good dogs would, you know, that were built well, uh, just genetically could handle it. Uh, but half of the class, you know, out of a 10 dog class, um, they, they, whenever stress hit, the, they would go to what they knew, that other language of, of running with their eyes. And um, it led me astray a lot of times, you know, trying to find guys. And I knew there was a better way, man. I just knew there was something, there had to be something different. And uh, so the, the way I track now, I still keep that, that uh, some of those methods from that way. Like I tell every person at, a, at any seminar that I am part of or teach solely, um, I'm not saying get rid of what you've been doing. I'm just saying put it in that drawer in your toolbox, and then this is how I do things. Maybe you're running into a dog that needs that that kind of old school stuff. Like um, you know, you need to have a lot of drawer drawers in your toolbox and and be able to use them. So, um, and and just like you said, like Ted buries his from dogs past, and I vary mine. I see that, well, this dog needed this and I'll keep it in that drawer. And if the next dog throws it at me, then I've got that, got that down pat. Um, the way mine has changed, like in a nutshell is, um, I really, I, I was real sold on the, the Dick stall method. I did a couple classes with Dick and, and the article based stuff. And it's really good stuff. Um, it, it does take a long time to, to work, do the work up on it. Um, but what I found with uh, a few dogs is that it becomes more about the article than it does about the track. Um, that article based tracking and that kind of build up with a uh, nail and washer and all that stuff. Uh, it can make some dogs uh, real frantic over the washer or the article um, where now I really, I don't put anything on the track except our human odor. I don't, put a toy on the track. I don't put an article on the track. I don't, there's no, there's no end to the track. Um, and that way it leaves us open to say, um, if the dog does the first hundred yards, um, and is struggle busing in the first 50 and recovers and finishes that last 50 really strong, I don't have to push him another, however many yards the track is to get to the toy, which most times we end up uh, about half the time, I think we end up rewarding really shitty behavior by the time he does make it to that end reward. So through so a marker system and paying them on or near footprints um, is a really good tool to not have to worry about, oh shit, my tug's 300 yards out there and he's killing me at 50, you know, um, and vice, vice versa. If he's just wrecking it, I don't have to worry about, okay, now he's going to get his toy. I got to out and then go right back to work. I can track myself or the track layer all the way back to the vehicle and pay anywhere. Um, that is one big key thing. And the other thing is that I, I really, um, that has changed tracking a ton is holding dogs accountable. Like if they come off for this big wide circle, I've learned all dogs are doing is taking a breather. They're fucking off taking a breather where they need to learn how to maintain their energy while tracking. I can, I can give them a, a break by using, utilizing a forward down and let them chill there. 
Um, but when they come off and they, through my build up reps, um, they're going to have a consequence uh, for getting too wide, guessing, uh, circling me, any of that kind of stuff um, that you know is them just taking a break. Um, I'm going to hold them accountable, whether it's leash, uh, most likely it'll be uh, through e-collar stem. Um, and then if, if, I, if they're really hard timing me and I have to push them a little extra, I have the ability to, as soon as they reacquire, mark and pay in that moment. Uh, and it can be indirect, direct, doesn't matter. I don't even have to mark. I can just, you know, throw a toy over their head. If it's hard surface, I can throw a, a few pieces of kibble over their head, um, right on footprints. That way, you know, we're getting that direct, re direct reward essentially. Um, but holding them accountable has really been the big thing. Um, and because it's what is allowed will continue. So those breaks that we block and then they fuck off over here and then we cap them back around, they hit the turn and we roll. No, it's, it needs to be, hey, I, I said track, uh, I need you to maintain your energy, keep your mouth closed, keep your head in the game, um, work efficiently, man. You know, my, my retired dog, he's in the house, man, he just would gas himself so fast after the first handful of bites he got. Tracking meant, you know, it was of high value. So getting a solid foundation of that really smooth pace number one that a team can stay up with two you have enough gas in the dog's tank to really end up with a fight at the end that they can survive we can survive and and get um you know anybody that's wanting to put up that type of fight uh get handcuffs on them so those are you know that evolution has i still use a whole lot of stuff in, in one dog i mean it varies dog to dog but um that's the gist kind of the um I guess my magic sauce that makes what I do work for me. And like you said, everybody does their own way. And as long as it catches bad guys, man, that's all that matters. Yeah. We had a, <laughs> for a while, like when I first learned to track, it was all hot trails. Right. And then you get these dogs that are super motivated and that's sort of where I like, and if you come to HRDs or if you sit through any of my presentations, you'll hear me say eyes, ears, and nose. That's the way the dogs hunt in order of operations, even though they're, even though their nose is obviously their strongest, like yep. their strongest scent or not scent, is their strongest like um, sense. Yep. Like they will default to eyes, ears, and nose uh, in that order because they're fucking prey animals. They chase stuff. That's why they chase tennis balls. Yep. That's why they chase rabbits and birds and all kinds of crazy shit. Um, Mice in the fucking field outside. Exactly. <laughs> and then ears and the nose. So I use that. I don't want to say against them, but I use it in a way we teach building searches and we teach area searches and we teach tracking for what for proximity alerts, I guess is the best is the term that everybody knows. Right. So, and I teach my handlers, I'm like, when he starts doing this shit and he picks his head up and starts looking around, I was like, he's either, he's under the impression that we're close enough that he can smell or that he can see or hear this dude. Right. So, you know, spidey senses need to go up. Um, after uh, my split with uh, my former partner, I started doing tracking the way that I've wanted to do it for a long time. And I kind of messed around with it and did some dogs that way over the last couple of years. And <clears throat> excuse me, one thing that I've really found doing kind of like a combination of the Dick Stall thing and the hydration method is I use that article for all kinds of stuff, yeah. not just finding articles. Yeah. Um, I use it for drive capping. So uh, for better or for worse, uh dogs imported from europe are they're they're like high school kids they are taught to pass a test the europeans know how we test in the united states or wherever um and this is not a knock um but they they prepare the dogs for that so the dogs are like bite 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 all the fucking time it's all they want to do right so you get them in and they're just head hunting fools they'll get them out of the kennel and they're like, who am I biting? You, 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 who's getting smoke? And they're like, no, I need you to do this instead, right? So um, because tracking at that stage is a very like low drive thing before we get bites on it, uh, before we get bites on tracks, like I'll use it as a drive capping tool. Um, like today I had dogs out at the range, we're out shooting rifles and we're asking the dogs to do like, 20 foot track to an article and then down and they're getting food on article while we're shooting. Right. Yep. So rather than let them sit there and just fucking decide, they're like, you know what? I don't like this noise. And I make sure my handler or my, my handler and my trainers, it was like, make sure that they're not pairing 
because at this point they've already the dogs have already learned how bark collars work and all this other shit so they're wearing bark collars so if we shoot and they bark they understand that the bark causes the bark collar that causes the collar not the firearms so it works out really well we had some dogs that are super reactive and like super visually stimulated and like if you move too fast they fucking fire up so um i'm i'm kind of of that i i firmly believe that those articles are more than just articles and um i use it as a method to drive cap so we have a dog now i had two dogs now that when we get we got done with detection work they were so fucking spun, spun up yeah. I would, I, we have a tiny ass little challenge coin <clears throat> hanging out on the floor in the kennel and i'm like go run his article and so the trainers would cast him over he would go and down on it we would drop dropping food over his head yeah. kick the article ask him to do a little bit of obedience until the dog comes down and drive and when we start transferring that it makes a huge difference so on tracks yeah. once we start biting like then all of a sudden they're like oh shit you mean i get to yeah. bite people doing this and then it's fucking game on so then I use articles to check in, like to give them a right. break and I'll like give them something to do because they get more and more and more and more and more and more. And so, yeah, it's, yeah. but it, I, it has been um, extremely successful um, for us yeah. for sure for yeah. the last two years. So, yeah. yeah. So uh, explaining a little bit of what you were talking about earlier so that everybody's on the same page. I think most people probably got it, but there's some that, that don't. And I was just talking about this with somebody the other day. So the guy lay, lays the track, goes out. You say, yeah, just go you know, 200 yards that way, step out. Yep. Don't drop anything. You as the handler or even maybe the trainer following him has the reward. And at some point, you're just going to toss it over his head into the footprints. Um, or if you're doing a, a, you know, an indirect back to you type reward system. Yep. What are you, um, so, so, And this is what screws people up is sometimes that might be 25 yards into the track where they're nailing are you what are you looking for are you is it always when they are doing their best like it's actual perfect yes. tracking is that what we're looking for yep yep 100 percent. and i i say a couple things um one i'm gonna be existential reward for a long time they're not gonna get um that toy reward most likely until i see they need that little bit of umph um uh but definitely not until i have the out rock and rolling um because i'm not going to fight them over it um but the 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 two main things is one my old trainers kept saying um you know trust your dog trust your dog trust your dog and i've heard that you know a gazillion times and my thing is um yeah we can say it but as a trainer i have to make the dog trustworthy i have to make the dog where when we say track um it means throw their nose down and we go with them. Yeah, you know, uh, leash checking and leash pressure and all that stuff is good, but we need the dog to understand. And that's probably the biggest thing is I try to free shape the tracking, let them um, build the behavior as they go. The The leash is really in the beginning stages, just a fence. It's my aquarium. Um, so I don't allow any forward progression until they're offering um, the mouth closed, nose down and moving smoothly. Um, so behind my kennel is I have a huge hay field behind there that I throw my uh, bow's ears in, turn some music on, get on the mower and just go mow tra you know, trails through it. I have crisscross intersections, uh, you know, turnabouts, everything. So that way I can kind of skinner box those beginning lessons. Uh, they're, the grass is head high on the side. Um, most of them aren't going to go bounding off through there when odor is you know, down on the short grass on the inside. Uh, and then I can pay periodically. So like uh, Ted saying with, with the kind of gear switching, getting that clarity, when you mark for the first time, when their nose is in odor and their head is down and they come back to you indirect, they take a handful of food. Um, at that moment, I'm probably going to tap their e-collar and as they're leaving my hand, give them a little juice to go back to work. Um, and you will see with most dogs, the clearest, because they're like, what the fuck did I just get marked for, right? They're going to go back to that spot and, and really be, um, most of the time, really deep nose, really efficient, uh, uh, you know, tracking behavior. And so we allow them to progress forward. Uh, and, and we can mark it one time throughout a whole track, or we can mark it 20 times, depending on the dog. Um, and you have a whole a gamut of ways of being able to pay. But um, making, making those corrections 
when they get wonky and, and want to get wide or start guessing or taking those breathers. That's how I, I feel that we make them trustworthy is say um, to avoid that correction. You give me this behavior, you get paid for it um, down to perfection, start to finish. Um, Cause I think a, a big thing and, and I've done it as well is when handler school ends, there's a, a pretty decent gap a lot of times with that um, first deployment that that new handler hits. And there's a lot of that old shit kind of butthole pucker moments where um, once they've been able to understand that the dog knows how to do its job and it's not going to fuck off because it knows there's a consequence for that, knowing that their dog is trustworthy through doing enough known, I always say do enough known tracks that you can't get an unknown wrong. Um, because then you know what you're seeing as you're going. Uh, when you get to that point, that first deployment track is going to go so much easier because you've been prepared for it. Down to tracking, pull the dog off of a track, go clear a building, go clear a car, come back, relocate the track and continue tracking again. Um, because we do that so often in the real world, but very rarely do we set it up in training that that the handler needs to know that as soon as they come back and, and get acquisition of track again, their, their, the clarity of task is a hundred percent. So um, that ability to mark along the way is, is, a, uh, you know, a, a good way to do it. And the thing with like new, new handlers tracking <laughs> with people and they're like, they're in training tracks are great. Even if you do a single blind, like handlers are like, okay, yeah. like I, I can, I can see this and I can see that. And like, yeah. I can see these changes of behavior. Right. We talk a lot about that. But then they start tracking and then inevitably it's some dickhead on the agency or a neighboring agency that has, doesn't have a dog has never run a dog or the dog they have is fucking yep. bullshit and handlers or, or other backup guys are like, Oh, what's that dog doing? He's up. And they're, you know, I've had handlers. They're like, what do I say to him? Like, tell him to shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, yeah, shut right. up. Look, shut up. Look for bad guys. Nobody cares what you think. Like that's I'm watching right. the dog. Shut up. <laughs> like, that's right. That's and I tell right. my canine handlers and I tell them this every day from day one. You know, and there's a thing like Rigney posted something the other day about like his pet peeves and shit. And mine's leash hand. One of them is leash handling and tracking. And I tell my canine handlers like, there's only two people in law enforcement to pay attention to wind direction: canine handlers and helicopter pilots. And right. the other day, my canine handler texted me from way out in western Oklahoma where it's hot, flat, and windy. And he was like, "Dude, I drive by the same flag every day on the way to work, and I know which way it's blowing. <laughs> Some time it's probably out of the south." Yeah. But uh, yeah, so and yeah, 100 percent like. They, uh, there is a substantial gap and then, you know, there's a lot of other things going on at that time and handlers are like, yeah. and they're like, you know, and they tell me, cause they're like, I'm on my way to track. I'm like, all right, you know what to do. Just fucking do it. But, and I tell yep. them the dog doesn't know this is training. This, this, this right. is not training. And he doesn't know that right. it's, he doesn't know that it's game on. So yep. he'll do it. <laughs> yep. So in the, in the thing you just talked about, you, you basically covered three different, a uh, couple other topics too. That could be a whole episode. And I want to I want to break a couple of things down because you blew some people's minds. First, they got to be rocking and rolling that out. There's like yep. 50 guys listening to them went fuck. I'm screwed. I'm <laughs> out. I'm out. I can't stop. And then yep. you talked about you talked about using the e collar as a gas pedal to get them back on. A whole other yep. topic. A lot of guys aren't used to. And then yep. correcting correcting fucking off with an e-collar and other things that guys aren't used to. So if you're listening to us and you're like, well, I'm afraid to use the e-collar to correct because it'll screw him up. You have got to go back and relearn e-collar because you're obviously not doing it yeah. correct. You're probably on yep. 55 on, on the yeah. dog to 1900 and, and getting the dogs four feet to jump off it's the ground. Yep. Right. Yep. That's just smoking these dogs. So that's a, that's yep. a whole bunch of other things. But my, what I want to tell people is while you're thinking about this, and you're going to go out and do it. Micro skills, right? That's right. Get better at the e collar, then learn yep. how to use the e collar to get forward movement, and then yep. <laughs> and work on your out of your toys separately. Right. Do not try to do this all in a track, right? Because yeah. it's a mess. <laughs> um, yeah. Like a whole and mess. That, that's I guess. the the one of my number one things with when I start a working dog is they get zero obedience until they are done with everything else. They're there is no obedience done until they're done. That e-collar is get the fuck away from me and go use your nose and be good at it. Then the e-collar can mean get the fuck back to me. But they, they, they really need to know how to end that stressful moment where they're feeling everything go down leash. 
They should not be reverting to a heel. They should not be reverting to a down. They should be having the confidence and understanding where when you see them challenging somebody because you're tracking and somebody's talking shit, you can say, hey, cut it the fuck out and get them right back on task because they un they have that uh, clarity of task. It's crystal clear, not get hammered and then come find their left leg and give you a really pretty heel when you're looking for a guy with, you know, a bazooka. So, yeah. yeah if all they know is that heel position is the only place they're not getting high stem, that, right. that is where they're going to revert to. I call it Velcro right. dogs. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. right. Yep. So Ted and I talk about this a lot when we're talking to other people about tracking. Dogs are either tracking, looking for the track, or fucking off. You That's right. really need to know the difference. But when we're tracking, and I tell this to guys all the time, when we know, we know where the track goes. I do a lot of a lot of known tracks with handlers for a long time. That's right. Because I'm like, why did he do a 90 degree turn? Why did you let him do a 90 degree turn and go over there? Well, I was thought he would figure it out himself. I wanted him to yeah. work it out. Yep. I'm like, no, period. No. <laughs> yep. I, as, and, and listen, if you're not good with the e-collar, you'll be surprised or maybe you won't, but you'd be shocked to learn how, I, I, how well uh, uh, works mm -hmm. when they yep. go to drift off to sniff animal odor, you know, yep. that the track was a, yep. you know, a hundred yard kind of winding track that followed the road on the right and the bush line on the left. And it was just a yep. flat, a, a low grass track all the way through there. Why are you letting him check deer openings? Why are you letting him go across yep. the street? I, 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 you can stop it especially yep. and people don't there's some trainers that don't think this you know you have dogs i think probably genetic in their genetics where they they um yeah you know cast cast, yep. cast real wide like yeah like i've had dogs that that would go they would track all the way till they lose the track have a heart attack come all the way across have right. a heart attack come all and you can see them panic ah yep. panic ah pan you can yep. actually teach them to keep it in the meat a little bit more that's right and it's by not letting them do it that's right when, when we and, have, and you uh, can bust their ass when they do it and then mark and pay a second they come back in you can do that 20 times when we start the hydration tracking um because some of it's visual too so they keep their nose mm -hmm. down and they're tracking like the line and whatever else but we've had some dogs that and i will purposely not use clean surfaces like places that have gravel and stuff because it looks like fucking pieces of hot dog yeah. so um and i will I will correct them. And if I'm not handling, so I'm going to plug dog her again. I, and you know, we've, we're talking about the other caller before we started recording, but I use that, um, finger kick. Yep. And if they come off or if they pick their head up, ah, tag, ah, tag, yep. ah, tag. Yep. So when we start going to grass and everything else, if I see them pick their head up, if I know they shouldn't be, then, ah, and I don't even have to yep. usually have to correct them. Like, and yep. it's not, I think I, you know, I mean, it's at like, you know, 15 to 20. I mean, it's not like we're fucking blasting right. or anything, but That's right. just enough. And, I, yep. and they learn real quick, like, okay, I keep my head down, blow through this, eat all this kibble, get onto the, cause we, in that stage two, we'll start integrating the article. Um, and we'll integrate the article like towards the end of the track right. to have them give them a checkpoint. Yep. Like, I gotta yep. find this fucking thing. And then when yep. I do, and then we weed that completely out to where it's just water on the article and that's and that's their checkpoint like it's i call yeah. like because everyone listening to this is you know the fucking video game generation i'm like that's the save point that's yeah. where you can save. Yeah. that's where you can save your progress <laughs> yeah. so and then yeah. i can recast them i can do whatever but uh right yeah, so that's, if you're listening the, to this uh, and you're doing if you're doing hydration that's how you do it and i i when we had steve white on i i blanked on even mentioning that because he was Fucking, if you listen to him talk about that, I like I got off that episode. I was like, God damn it, I'm never. I, I, you got to listen to like ten times, right? I quit. Yeah. <laughs> this dude knows so much about this shit, and yeah. so but I even forgot to mention it. But yeah, that, that's yeah. the trick. Yeah, and that that's what I love about rising stem, and uh, the new collar I have is has decreasing stem as well. So they they go to to leave the track to go do whatever booby trap we have set out for them. Um, they they rise it increases stem as they go away. Uh, and then to add a little bit of gas to get back in, I can decrease stem as they come back in. Um, and then once I see the reacquisition and then really good tracking behavior, I can mark and jackpot them right there. I can give them everything I got. Um, 
and uh, and make it very clear of of what the rise was for, what the decrease was for, and and what the payment was for. So it's uh, I want them being very very careful at ninety degree turns on the middle of a Walmart parking lot. Uh, can't you know, because if 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 their nose is not glued to the ground, it's not available. It's not there. They're not going to pick it up. So if the if it's a ninety degree right turn. That's cool if they check left, but they better be damn careful while they're checking left and and be quick on their toes to get back right because that's what makes them trustworthy. They have to know that there is a correction that will come. They can't avoid it by doing proper behavior. So, and just to clarify it real quick, when you're marking, so say you laid a 100-yard track, this is a round number, and you're yep. going here and he's killing it at like 30, 40, 50 yards, and you're marking – are you paying or is it variable reward each time? How, how are yeah. you doing it? Yeah. So eventually it gets to, I'm marking and variable reward where they come back, they get told, go back to work. Um, and, and really take that drive and frustration back into efficient tracking again. And I think that goes into a lot of gear switching. And once I go to a toy, then it's going to be out or it's going to be Mark. They get their tug, 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 tug out and go right back to efficient tracking again. So um, you can do direct reward where you mark, go around and feed them right on footprints as they're going with each step. When I do seminars, that's mostly what I do. Um, and that way it keeps the dog ahead of me and not coming back and, and checking in with me. Um, Cause you'll, you'll see some dogs start kind of queuing into that. And I'm going to deal with that with e-collar as well. Um, and you can help it by, just doing direct reward, just tossing food over their head, toy over their head and, and keep them working down range. Um, and in detection and travel and any work, I mean, we should be, once we give that command, we should be irrelevant. Uh, besides an immediate action drill to save their life, uh, we should be a booby trap to them. Uh, um, and it's finding that balance of, hey, I, I really need you to detail this seam and trust my hand. Uh, but also, as soon as I say track or dope or whatever, I, fuck me, just go do your mm -hmm. thing. Don't pay attention to me. I'm I'm a trap. So uh, two two real quick questions. Then we're gonna we're gonna take our second break. Was one is what is your um, stance on bites at the end of tracks? Um, so I do very very little. Uh, I mean, maybe in a school they may do two bites on a track. Um, I, and I, I do it, uh, low decoy prone, uh, sleeve gets deposited at the end on a, a try to get it on a really nice, uh, ditch bank. That's a crisp drop off. Um, I've got a few spots here that I use them strictly for implementing those bites, um, bite, uh, break stick or choke off and just back them away. Decoy slides back down into the hole he came out of and uh dog gets drug away. I really want that um that nose to teeth ending um uh, that's that is the goal uh, and as they start to live on the street and, and thrive and hunt um we go back to you know especially they get their first bite we go i have the handlers come back to me let's work on uh, making sure we still got a clear head make sure the out still understood and make sure that fucking nose goes to the ground uh and stays down for the track because in my opinion, man, footprints is what gets us there. True tracking is what catches a bad guy. Um, they bang a 90 in the hood and, and you're trailing. And what a dick. I got a motorcycle going by super loud. I thought it was one of them fucking uh, hogs. I'm like, he followed you to Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> He's just fucking acting like a dick. Um, but that that footprint tracking, man, is is and I want the dog to use everything available. I want them in a live deployment to to use everything to their advantage, but I really want them understanding that footprints is how they're going to make it through a truly contaminated environment to our end target. All right. One more question. Um, so teaching and, and Ted touched on it earlier, teaching um, new guys how to track is can be frustrating with a leash. I require during my school, everybody must work a 30 foot leash. You got to get proficient with a 30. You Listen, you hit the road, you want to do a 20, that's on you if you're good. But you're going to be dodge a wrench, dodge a ball. That is one of the best statements that's ever been in any movie that can be applied in so many things. If you can dodge a wrench, yep. you can dodge a ball. If you can run a 30 or a 50, you can murder a 20-foot leash. 
But yeah. during the during the time we're teaching them, it's very frustrating. And I used to be, everybody knows I used to yell at everybody all the time. And I, I've, <laughs> I've tried not to. I've, I've come down a lot. And it, it's frustrating. What are some of the things that you have found, things you've said to handle? Mm. Everybody has their isms. Ted has a million of them. Oh. But everybody has their isms. <laughs> I've, got, I've say, got one for these. And we say the same thing to these leash handlers all the time. What are some of the things that you say to new people that seems to click with them where they kind of get it? Um, probably the biggest one that I'm putting e-collars on handlers for is stop fucking balling your leash up at the end. Just uh, let it, not a God. cowboy. Damn it. I yeah. Let that. it fucking drag. Fuck. Um, uh, Jake Simmons Fuck, love him to death. He would ball that in the beginning. Whenever I first started working with him, he'd ball that thing up. I'm like, man, I understand you, you rolled your bull rigging up that way, but let the fucking leash drag. God <laughs> so, damn it. Um, uh, that's probably number one. Number two is it, it was hard for me, um, because I came from tracking on a harness, keep your hand high, keep it out of their way, um, to everything I do. Well, not everything. If we hit woods, we're going to switch to the harness, but most of what we do is on a flat collar under their leg. Um, and, uh, so for, for my handlers, I want them to stay pretty much at the, the last foot of their line. Um, let the dog have that to work. Do not micromanage them. Um, it, at the point that they are efficient, they should be utilizing that line and we just follow them. Um, so don't be up on their ass if you don't need to be. Don't micromanage them and uh, and flow with them like you need to. So that, that balling the leash up and then just letting uh, the leash fall whenever they're working something out, a turn or distraction or whatever, um, just let it stay out of the way. Try not to wrap it through their mouth or double wrap their leg, um, but be on top of it. We use a lot of flexies uh, for detection. And uh, just I tell them all the time, just because it's a flexi doesn't mean you can just be a spectator sport and stand back there with the thing in your hand. You still have to work your line. Um, so, but yeah, ball in the leash up, man. I'll, I'll put an e-collar on a handler's hand real fast for that. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I, I, I yell, like I usually give them a chance at first. And then I'm like, look, you're in a cowboy. Put that shit down. I know we're in Oklahoma, <laughs> right? Knock it off. And then yep. uh, the le the kennel leashes have knots in them. Uh, the thirty yep. foot has it at a ten, twenty, and then like twenty seven, like right towards the end. And I'll tell yeah. them like, and the first day of school, I'm like, you need to be on knot two. And then a little further on, you need to be on knot three. And I and the other thing yeah. is two hands. And I'm like, I need you to use the leash in your non dominant hand, your non shooting right. hand. And I yep. was like, because you were tracking somebody that that's right is fucking dangerous and you had better have, yep. you, you should have a weapon mounted light and yep. you know, and then, so then we start practicing four downs and really where that happens very well is where we do four downs on hard quarters, like around buildings where I'll tell them to yep. down. And I was like, now just drop the goddamn leash. Just drop it. Yeah. It's already yep. there. Push and I'm up. Walk up, walk up to the dog, Push grab, up, grab his it. harness. Yep. Grab yep. his harness, take your fucking firearm out. Let your backup yep. move around the corner, recast the dog, get to the second knot, make sure he's on. Yep. Get to your third knot and take off. And yep. uh, the so when dudes are like not using all the leash, I say this. I'm like, you've got to have a tiny dick. And they're like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, you've got 30 feet and you're using three of it. I was like, you're really good with three feet of leash. And everybody laughs and they stop doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you don't want them in the 30 foot handle holding on to the handle. No, I know. don't want that either. Right. No, yeah. no, none of ours have handles on them anyway. But yeah, I, I keep my handler. I'm, I'm key. I'm kind of keen to a 20 footer. That's what I always tracked with was a 20 footer. And, um, you know, we, we have really thick marsh. You can go from tracking through a, a nasty neighborhood and be on the edge of the Everglades in a blink of an eye, um, and be, Ugh. you know, treading water and, and swimming through a marsh. So I stayed Ugh. on a 20 footer. I just, I never had, I didn't, I don't like a lot being behind me. So, um, but that was just that in, that environment dictated it. And that's what I got kind of keen on. I'll use a 30 for if we're doing, uh, you know, on leash area search or, or uh, uh, build, you know, a type of building clearing situation where we're on that. I'll, I'll run a 30 then. Um, but on tracking, I'm pretty keen to a 20. Yeah, and one more thing before we go to commercial handlers, stop fucking running. Uh, yes. No running yep. on track. Yep. No yep. running, no running, no running. That's right. You're That's blowing right. turns. You are going to miss stuff. 
What yep. are you in a hurry for? Her? <laughs> and what are you gonna yep. do? None of you some bitches train for distance. What are you gonna do? Three mile That's track? Right. You're gonna run the whole time? You guys will die. That's right. That's right. Yep. They they can only track at the pace they can handle a ninety. So and and I haven't found one yet that can bang one at a ninety at a run. So yeah, that's a good way. And to you're gonna get your ass. Like you're gonna get your ass beat at the end because the dog's gonna be smoked. You're gonna be smoked. You're gonna be alone because <laughs> no backup's Nobody's gonna, gonna be, be with able, you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Johnny yeah. Fat Ass is back exactly. here. Exactly. He's like been I'm there, on the balloon that. knot. Whatever. <laughs> been been so, there, done that. Yeah. Um. We're gonna go ahead and take a break. We come back. We're gonna um switch gears and talk about kind of uh we should have mike on when we did the um transition from police work to business and we're going to get into that we're going to talk uh, some of the mistakes mike would admit that he made or yep. um some of the things he did that are don't reinvent the wheel and we're going to try to help people that want to get into um dog business <clears throat> only do pets um and uh <laughs> so when we get back <laughs> go ahead and uh in the meantime please don't skip the commercial but if you do um Check the show notes in the bottom for the uh, discount codes and the websites and everything else. Stand by. All right. We love the Perkinsons down in uh, North Carolina at Highland Canine Training. They are great people, great trainers. They got a good business model. They're awesome folks. We've been with them for a long time. Uh, they're also super smart. And they understand that a lot of agencies are struggling to have manpower. So they're not sending people away for training. You guys have been there. You know, you put in denied lack of manpower. So they've created an online course section of their website, tactical police canine training.com. You get on there under training the online course, but here's the best thing is they offer a supervisor canine supervisor course, which we know a lot of uh, police canine supervisors don't get to go to training. They don't know as much as they should right here online. Uh, the course discusses topics such as proper selection of dogs and handlers, proper deployment, effective allocation and utilization, as well as liability and the FLSA issues, which we know is where all the legal stuff comes from, interdepartmental. Uh, the course can be taken at your convenience, and you will receive a certificate of completion at the end. Uh, they're offering an amazing discount, guys. 30% off using the discount code WDR30. It's a no-brainer. If you're a police supervisor and you guys have manpower issues and you can't go Get on tacticalpolicecaninetraining.com under the training tab. Get on that supervisor's course, man. I'm telling you, it's a smart decision. Another one of our favorite partnerships with the podcast here is the one and only Dogtra. The Dogtra guys have been producing some amazing tools in the dog training world for a long time. Everything from e-collars, GPS tracking, ball trainers. If it's electric and you use it with a dog, they've probably done it. They're the best. They are revolutionizing the way you communicate with the dog. I use it daily, whether I'm using pets. Uh, I use the 200C on most of our pets. Uh, most of my patrol guys will use a 1900 hands-free, 1900S hands-free. And then I use the ball popper pretty much daily with all of our detection dogs for imprinting on our box protocols. So hit them up at Dogtra Official on Instagram and Facebook. And then you've got dogtra.com. And when you go there, if you use the discount code WDR. One zero, they give you ten percent off a single item over two hundred bucks. So if you're looking at a nineteen hundred S or that Ball Popper Pro or one of those things, it'll knock a substantial chunk off there. So hit them up, doctor.com, WDR one zero. So everybody knows that Ted and I uh, not only train police dogs, we train pet dogs, right? We train dogs. So it's why our relationship with Ray Allen Manufacturing is so important. They've, these guys have been doing this so long. They knew and they understand that dogs are dogs and it's not just working dog people that need things for their dog and dog training. So you go to rayallen.com. They have everything dog related that you need. Anything that when it comes to dogs, pet dogs, your pet training dogs, police dogs, dogs you're training for other departments, anything you need, rayallen.com. Uh, they've got it. You can get on there. So if you're ordering stuff for police dogs and if you have a pet side, you can get it all in one, man. They ship it out. Got a nice big box full of a whole bunch of stuff. There's nothing better than getting a big box of dog training stuff in the mail. They also are great to us and they offer a discount code working dog radio, all capital letters, working dog radio for 10% off. Check them out. RayAllen.com. Great people. Ted and I use them every day. Super excited to have American Aluminum Accessories on board with us here at the podcast. These guys manufacture a wide variety of products from high quality cam locker toolboxes to an extensive line of products designed to meet 
the ever-changing needs of law, the law enforcement community. Around 1992, due to the demand for safe and secure transport for a local law enforcement agency's canine unit, they introduced the very first in-vehicle Easy Rider canine container. So it was basically what we now call just our inserts. They have continuously grown and expanded uh, the products, catering to the needs and the wants of their valued customers and high-profile clientele, and catering specifically to law enforcement. Over the years, as the needs have changed for law enforcement, they've evolved and expanded the products to include inmate transport systems, the canine training aids, which I use quite a bit of, canine inserts, most of, every one of my guys has one of those things. And you know, you, if you're not even have to be in law enforcement, I have several friends that are civilians that work, lots of dogs that have the inserts put into their cars too. So if you got one that fits, you can do it. Uh, they also do contraband and animal control systems, just to name a few. So be sure to hit them up. The website is Easy Rider Online. So that's the letter E, the letter Z as in zebra, rideronline.com. If you're looking for them on Instagram and Facebook, it's American Aluminum Accessories. Feel free to hit them up there too. So our first and oldest sponsor that's been with us from the beginning is Arno out, out at ALM, uh, out there in, in Las Vegas area. Arno is a great dude. He makes great stuff for, for police work and sport work, suits, tugs. I'm telling you right now, his tugs are the best in the business. You can't get any better. Multiple colors. Uh, I, I buy boxes of them from him and give them out to everybody. Uh, I've got a bite suit from him. Love it. I've had it for a little over three years, and it's holding up like a champ. Um, Ted's got a suit that he's had forever from ALM. Uh, we wouldn't go anywhere else, man. We love it. Arno is such a good dude. His uh, ALM canine equipment.com is the website. Get on there. He's got pre-made suits. He can do custom suits based on your measurements. Um, he's got stuff already, already made up. If you kind of get a kind of generic large size, maybe for everybody, the colors he has, man, is really cool. He can put a lot of stuff on those suits. Uh, check them out. ALM canine equipment.com and use the discount code WD radio for 10% off. You know, running a kennel is one of those things that I always worry about is cleanliness and safety of dogs. And it's, it seems like it's an ever changing issue being able to house dogs and move things around and everything else. So the guys at horizon structure make this as easy as possible. Literally the only thing you have to do is have water and power hookups and they deliver it and you can put dogs in that day. And it comes built, comes on a trailer. They just drop it off. You plug it in, put dogs in it, and you're ready to rock. You keep them clean. You keep them safe. You keep them cool in the summer and warm in the wintertime. And it's completely custom. You can go complete mild to wild. I've seen some that were stainless steel all the way from top to bottom on the inside. And then I've seen some for a, a bulldog breeder that, you know, had smaller gates because those things can't jump. So if you reach out to them, uh, they're sitting there waiting for you to call and help you through the custom design process. They have everything from two dog ones up to, uh, I want to say like 18 or 20. It's a lot of, you can put a lot of dogs, indoor, outdoor runs. So anything you've ever dreamed of, they've got it, or have done it or can do it. So they've taken all the guesswork out of building it. Everything is pre-done to your specifications that it's assembled, dropped off, boom, you're ready to rock. These things are amazing. Uh, Rigney has one. Uh, we've had him on the show a couple of times. Go check out his Instagram and you can see he's posted it up there before. Go look Horizon up at Horizon Structures, spelled out uh, on the internet. It's horizonstructures.com. And you're going to look for the link in there that says commercial dog kennels. Or give them a call, 888-447-4337. They'd love to talk to you and get you started on the way. All right, we're back. Working Dog Radio broadcasting the bite with Mike Lilly from Eastern Tennessee. Uh chasing hogs through the swamp in florida <laughs> and then went somewhere safer with no fucking panthers or snakes or alligators <laughs> so right. it's just fucking just crackheads um <laughs> so we just talked about uh shit that second section that was a long one and that was a lot there's a lot good. of information yeah. in that one yeah so um we're gonna talk a little bit about shifting gears so you get out of law enforcement uh you i'm gonna put this in bunny ears if you're listening to you t on uh itunes or spotify you retire like eric did yep yep <laughs> and so uh talk a little bit about what that's like in terms of uh how you transition into the pet side plus uh you can talk a little bit about the canine side too yeah um so you know i was doing pets when i was still a cop on the side and and uh realized man it was like a you know, definitely a, a good way to go and got an opportunity, uh, um, to come to Tennessee and, 
you know, work, uh, pets and, and police dogs. And, uh, I tell you what kind of gave me the, the kick in the butt was, uh, Aaron Taylor put out his video of his last night at work. And, uh, I remember watching it and me and my wife were kind of on the fence, like, you know, obviously scared of getting out of that stable job and because and she yeah. was going to need she's a teacher she was going to need to leave her uh school as well and um and hit you know his his words hit, hit home for sure like don't let fear hold you back from a future and uh um you know i had some uh, health issues that being on that night schedule and being a supervisor and demos and court and uh, call outs was just kicking my butt, man. And, uh, so, uh, we finally decided just to, to do it, pull the trigger. And, uh, we moved up here and, um, you know, worked, uh, pets for, uh, a good chunk of time. And, uh, then me and my wife started MLK nine and got us a new facility. And, uh, like, obviously pets are the, the money maker. That's where the money's at. Um, police dogs are they're like we talked in the beginning they're definitely my passion like they are y'all's uh but the the little frou-frou pets that are acting a fool in the house um they need they need our help as much as the the street guys do so uh it's uh it was a rough patch for a little while and, and we learned a lot of lessons on the way uh and no regrets you know what i mean no no regrets wouldn't change it for the world uh glad we went through it uh, like my wife will tell anybody, you know, when we were, when I was a cop and she was a teacher, everything went our way pretty well, you know, everything went smoothly and, um, you know, we, we made okay money as a, as a pair. And, and, uh, once we got up here and kind of had some bumps in the road, we realized really quickly how to suck it the fuck up. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? No, nobody cares about, um, your bad day. Everybody has bad days. Everybody goes through shit and uh don't be a bitch really like don't don't take no for an answer uh don't let uh you know don't turn like my dad would say don't turn a mountain into a molehill you know just go through it don't worry about it and uh so that's what we did we we really uneducatedly worked our way through figuring out advertising figuring out google adwords figuring out the nightmare that that shit is and and I'm still horrible at it, but social media, you know, I try to be better at it. And um, I think the biggest lesson I learned was hire fucking people. <laughs> um, I, I told myself, you know, oh, we'll do four to six pets a month and a couple of police dogs here and there. We'll be fine. Well, fuck, I'll be working pet dogs till I'm 100. And, and uh, I just didn't want that. So got... Uh, got lucky and and was able to retain uh, a previous client that was a kennel tech for me at the other place and um, she's now a phenomenal trainer uh, got in contact with a kid that was working at a vet's office here and he uh, he is from where I'm from and had done an amazing job with his uh, personal dog so I hired him and I just hired an, another new girl who's phenomenal super good work ethic and man I've got a great team and um, that's probably the, and I, uh, I'm super tight with, with Jay Nix, with Jeremy. And I tell him all the time, bro, hire people, hire people, train and hire. You're not going to be able to do all this on your own. I thought I could, and it's not, it's not true. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my biggest curse. And Eric's too, like as a business owner, you're like, fuck it. I'll do it myself. I can do everything myself. Yeah. I don't need anybody's help. That's a lie. Right. That's right. <laughs> 110%. That is a lie. Yeah. You need help. Um, you have to build the tribe. I've got yeah. some great trainers and some kids and some guys that work for me, uh, that we've built the tribe and they're great. And yep. I'm grateful that I have them and I pay them a lot of money too. So yeah, Eric, exactly Eric, right. paid, Eric paid payroll while he was in hits and he almost passed out. He had to go fucking bring you a paper bag. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm glad my window doesn't open on my 11th floor hotel room. <laughs> I have 27 employees now, man. 27. Golly. It's, it's horrible. I mean, it's not yeah. wrong. I shouldn't say that. It, it's just, I was a cop, a knuckle dragger. I'm right, not right. used to payroll tax and, and right. massive dumps out of your, your bank account. It's but, a big gear change. Yeah. And, you know, and I have doggy daycare, which in our world, daycare is tough. 
right? And it's, yeah. but it's the only reoccurring charge you have yep. on your clients, right? But yep. my daycare right now, man, is for, um, we get a lot of training dogs out of daycare. We get a lot of daycare dogs out of training um, and social media content. And I, 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 I employ people. Both of yes. my daughters work there. Two of my nieces work there. Three of them at one point. The other one just got too old. She moved, you know, she's getting into her professional life. Two of my nieces, three of my daughter's friends from high school, and several other really, like, my full-time people are, like, killing yeah. them. My yep. granddaughters come there three times a week for an hour and a half. I get to see them all the time. My wife is the manager of the of that side, the boarding and the daycare. She's got a job. Yep. There. I have a manager who makes more per hour now than I did when I retired from the police department. Good on her. Right. Good yep. on her. Because yep. I'm, I'm lucky we can do I, me, make shit. I make nothing. Yeah. But, yeah. But here's the thing. So if, if I'm right now, I'm sitting here listening to this. I'm a cop in wherever. I'm like, I, I really hate this. I hate my supervisors. I don't want to be here for another 15 years. I'm going to start. I'm just going to go start. Talk about the reality of what you should have built up before you take that step off. Yeah. Um, you know, it's uh, there's plenty of work out there, but you've got to know how to where I was. I wasn't on social media. I, uh, you know, I um, creepy stalkered you know, kind of my wife's account just to have marketplace and look at shit to spend money on. But um, you need to, and maybe the different generation, like I, I, I'm not old, but I didn't grow up playing video games. You know what I mean? I had Tetris, but that was really about it. Uh, mm. And uh, so then I think maybe the new age will be more fluent with the social media and, and how to work around it and how to make think making make posts easy. Um, but you need to have the ability to talk to people, not like a cop. Like we, yes, we are able to conversate and, and use that uh, verbal judo that's probably gotten me out of so many fights. It's not funny, um, but also know that we, it is customer service. Like as bad as we hated it in law enforcement, it's an even different level of customer service. So um, knowing that is big, um, knowing how to advertise yourself, which I'm horrible at. Um, you know, I'm just not, not fluent with it, but, um, and again, it goes back to knowing how to hire people that know more than you and my marketing guy, he's great. Cause he does everything that I can't and keeps me in line and, um, and have a team. Like if it wasn't for my wife, we would be nowhere. Uh, have, if you don't have that other half, it's going to be hard. It, it, I, it really is going to be hard. So um, where, uh, Susie makes, she handles all of the crap that I have. No, I don't do numbers like me and math are really bad together. We don't vibe. Um, and she handles all that stuff. So having all of those things in line before you pull that cord is important. Um, and, and I'm always open for phone calls, man. I got, I've got cops coming in a couple A cop I worked with canine guy. That's I haven't seen in a long time. And he called me for advice on it. And I said, dude, do it hundred percent do it. Come see what I got going. Come stay a weekend. I'll let you, you know, finagle around the kennel, but I'm, I'm always open for a phone call on advice. Cause if it wasn't for, um, me, you know, clicking on Aaron's YouTube video, I may not have made the route that I made. I don't know if it was him that we had, we had him on the podcast, but I'm trying to remember we had him to somebody else. And I made the comment then I said, you know, so much of my business and Eric's business for that matter to come from social media, but so yeah. many departments have such a like blacklist for right. social media. So you get out and, and like, it's a skill. Yeah. Like it is a skill to learn how these, 100%. Things, learn how the algorithm works, when to post, what yep. to post, all this other shit, how to engage. And like, you know, if you, you know, and I'm not talking about TikTok, but like, I mean, <laughs> if you're a fucking cop and you don't have a social media presence and then all of a sudden you're like, fuck it, I'm going to quit. And then I'm going to go train pet dogs. Well, the problem yeah. with that is the only people to fucking know you are other cops. Yep. And they're That's all right. canine handlers and they probably yep. don't live near you. So like, That's right. and they're they definitely not going to hire they're, you. The people in That's your right. fucking town <laughs> are like, they don't know you, you as the dog trainer. They know you as a police officer. So, yep. and then you've already, if you're in a large, well, it depends on where you're at, but you may already have other trainers that are already kind of entrenched mm -hmm. and it is, there's enough to go around, but it is like, 
you got to kind of carve. That's what we do. I mean, we have a specialty. We have, uh, I'm the only balance trainer in town. Um, yeah. We have some sit means sit dudes, um, which is not balanced. Yeah. Training. And then we have some positive only, which is also not balanced, but um, yeah. I will take the cases that nobody takes. I also charge a lot more. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, it's, you kind of have to like, if you're going to do this, like get hooked up with a guy like Eric or myself or whatever else yep. and learn to do it. And then right. you come out like, cause I tell people this all the time, the pet side and the canine side, like it is a business. Like everyone's like, Oh, you run a fucking, you run a, you get to play with, you dogs, get to play all with dogs all day. Yeah. yeah. And like we were at hits and I was on the fucking phone with the Oklahoma tax commission for like two hours because yep. they, they made a mistake on our employee withholding tax they made a mistake not us they made a mistake and they're like yeah it's our mistake but you got to fix it i'm like well how the fuck does that work yeah. i was like you know alicia's busy and i'm in florida and uh, i'm supposed to be instructing and they're like oh well this is how you fix it and i'm like i gotta so it was it's a fucking night i spent two hours of my day doing that That's it's it. not even my fucking money yeah <laughs> like fucking, fucking and, and here's the thing and i fuck. and i've talked to a lot of guys um about it um if you're thinking about doing it right and like so we we um i boost posts on facebook i do just a lot of certain things that i do on facebook that are free and then I, of course we pay to google you know for the ad stuff yep. um i probably do as much on facebook as i do money wise as i do getting as i do on google and a lot of it's for free guys yeah. have to do well i'm not good at that social media stuff well, those days have to be over. That's right. But here's the thing. If you're a cop or if you're a military guy and you're looking to get into the business, the pet side business, I still tell everybody, I've said it on this podcast, I'll say it again. Do not think about getting into the police business. Stay out of it. There's too yep. many people. There's enough. You're not going to make it. You're not yep. going to make it. Yep. Uh, if that's your only money, if that's your only thing to make money doing police work, police dogs, volume volume and you're not going to have the volume you're just not you're gonna have five yep. kennels you will never make a living off of five eight kennels you got to have 50, right. 80 kennels you got to yeah yep. um and a good billion and, staff right and so yeah um reach out to me ted mike aaron taylor there's a bunch of guys that alicia. you can call in, in alicia yep. and we will tell you how we do i don't give a fuck if you're in canton ohio there's God makes dogs every day. There's plenty right. of training to go around. You can like I have there's two ladies that whose um training place is over by my kennel. Um we're basically competitors, but I have mentored them, taught them some stuff, sent them clients because they do lessons. I don't do lessons, right? Yeah, yeah they do they now either. do board and trains. Nope. So I'll send them, look, we're booked up. Maybe they're not, go check them out, try, you know, because yeah. they I I trust their training or whatever. But don't reinvent the wheel. Call us. Call Mike. I guarantee you he will sit down with you and say, hey, Absolutely. This, do Google this way. Do Facebook yep. this way. Or at least give it a shot. This is what really yep. works. But here's the thing, guys. If you do it, and this is the weirdest part, and this is the hard part. If you do it right, it's turning on a faucet. And you have to be ready to be busier than you can do, which means, yep. like Mike said, you got to hire people. Yep. That's where you're going to stubble. Uh, yep. Um, because do, cops, we don't trust them from within. So, because eventually, right? For me now, with twenty-seven employees, whatever I got, I can no longer work in the business. I have to work on the business. Right. Um, I'm able to jump in when I can. I'll jump in. When, when, so I have board and train trainers that work outside, and I have some trainers that work in the building and daycare. I'll jump yep. in and help. Yep. That's a privilege for me to get to go in, grab a leash, bang out some reps on a dog, help out. So everybody's yep. going. I check in on quality. My my manager Amanda and I are on the same page. Handle it. I then get to do the police dog stuff, right? But um, it. But if I have to, I I gotta leave. But I can't be doing police dogs and then four boarding trains. Right. You know, ask Aaron. Aaron Taylor before he expanded was doing like um. Like, eight or ten at a time when he was the only Ridgeside person. You know, yeah. he has. He has 37 trainers and yeah they're doing 135 board and trains a month plus 60 board and trains at the building you know yep. it, it, it's wild you think he can handle a fucking leash and get in there and do right. something there's no mm -hmm. way 
So you're yep. going to become a businessman quickly and you got to kind of be ready for it. Because like Mike said, I'm telling you right now, if you think I'm just going to be small time and I'm going to do six dogs a month just myself, three years from now, you will be burnt out looking for another right. job. Burnt That's right. out. You, yep. you got to do other things. And, and Ted's getting there. Ted's learning. When he picked up pets, it went fast. Boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom. And yeah. Ted's running reps on all these dogs. But at some point, he's not going to be able to. That's right. You know, somebody has yep. to do the boss work. Somebody has That's to. That's right. You know, I haven't and, touched a pet leash in I don't know how long. And Courtney Wolf told me, he's like, bro, you got to start being a business owner and not a dog trainer. Yeah, <laughs> It's tough. And that was and tough. What do we fucking know about that, right? That's right. That's and, right. <laughs> um, Ted, yep. Ted has been a business owner longer than we have. I started my business in like 2014, but it was, a, you know, bullshit. I was working in the police department, no pets, just doing a police dog here and there. Not yep. really. You know, I learned the ins and outs of a purchase order. You know, and things of invoices yeah. and quotes for a police department. Quotes. That was about it. God. You know yep. what I mean? But then now I had no choice. So I had Aaron and some other guys to talk to and learn from um, and learn, you know, learn some business. I, I talk, remember talking to Larry Crone a lot about how are you a yeah. fed and doing all these pet dogs. And he gave me some advice on that. And I have some other people. Yeah. And it's just ask, look around, ask, do not well, try to figure yeah. it out because you're going to screw it up. Yeah, that's I've been right. self-employed yeah, since Clinton asked. was in office. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I've, I've been self-employed for longer than, like, I mean, for 20 I Yeah, I'm, fuck yeah. all that. I, I, <laughs> nope. Yeah. And, and it's a, I mean, we've even started businesses. I mean, we sold Working Dog Dry Goods, uh, Paige now owns it, and it still runs as Working Dog Dry Goods, but we sold it. And I don't that's know awesome. many people that have had businesses in this industry that were successful enough to sell and then yeah. they transfer and then they take it and run with it and continue to make It'll money. Be successful, yeah. 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 So, uh, and we transferred everything over. So, I mean, yeah. When I met Ted and Alicia, that's what they were. They were working dog dry goods. Yeah. Um, that's how I knew them. Anyways, they, they still had torchlight going. So, but anyways, um, speaking of social media, how do people follow you? How do they find you? If I know like all of us, uh, we're still doing, you know, we can do seminars and things like that. If you need Mike Lilly, come out and do it tracking seminar yeah. for your group your training group or whatever how do they get a hold of you um so uh, you can find me on uh facebook ml canine or mike lily uh and then instagram is mike underscore lily underscore canine um and then uh email address is mike at ml canine and it's open door policy man my kennel door is always open uh any cops want to come see the daily grind um Want, or not even just cops, but anybody wanting to get in the industry and, and get a start. Um, I'm, I'm always open, man. Uh, I've had helping hands along the way and, and I'm willing to show everything I got. So. Yeah. And if you're some liberal shithead from California, don't move to Tennessee. I'm telling you, you guys are coming <laughs> there. It, East right. Tennessee is not what you're ready for. Go to Austin. That's right. Yeah. Go yeah. to Austin, Texas. Stay unless, you have, too. unless you have pet dogs. Unless you have pet dogs. Bring yeah, them. If you have a lot of pet dogs and money, come yeah, on. Yeah. Look us up. <laughs> Ain't nobody moving to Ohio. I don't have to bring that up. Nobody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's memes everywhere about like Ohio being the worst yeah. state ever. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, Ted, where about you? What about uh, you? Ted underscore Summers on Instagram, Torchlight K nine letter nine, or letter K number nine, and then Torchlight Pets. All on Instagram, HRD, uh, so HRD underscore or HRD underscore police underscore canine. Uh, and then obviously the podcast is working underscore dog underscore radio. Uh, go check out the new merch. Apparently they're like, we gave away a shit ton of shirts. It hits. And the new ones are up on the website. So it's the uh, Stellan is my safe word and then the can of whoop ass one, Malin all coming out of the beer can. Damon Jennings did a fantastic job on those. Yeah, uh, awesome. the, yeah those are great. Uh, and E, where are you? Uh, I am Van S K nine on Instagram for all things police dog and occasional personal post here and there. And then Facebook is Van S K nine Academy. I have those linked. So everything I post on Instagram goes to the Facebook page anyways. Um, Eric Stamber on Facebook, but basically the only thing I do on my personal page is to comment and share posts sure. from the business, the pet business, which is Ridgeside canine, Ohio, Ridgeside canine, Ohio. Um, three or four posts a day, which is what you have to do on Facebook. And um, it works out really well for us. So anyways, yeah, workingdogradio.com. The new shirt designs are great. The um, Stellan is my safe word uh, cartoon dog with a pimp mustache is creepy as shit. 
Uh, yeah, <laughs> As a, it, just like a guy you would think would tell you that. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Mike, loved having you on, man. Yeah. Um, Thank you. I'm in East Tennessee a few times a year. I got to hook up with you. I think the last yeah, time yeah. I was down there, you were back in Florida for a minute. and Yeah. Um, I think you were doing a, a United seminar, Canines United. Yeah. So. Um, Caninesunited.net or are they .com? Oh, good question. I can never, I, I can barely org. remember my social. Dot org, yeah, yeah. I think it's org. Yeah, it's it's United. Dot org. They're, uh, they spend a lot of money, man. They get a lot of people some training stuff. So, anyways, for sure, Mike, man. Great thanks. I appreciate you coming on, buddy. Yes, sir. Thank y'all. All right, Ted. See, I got to go to the kennel. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you.